Welcome to Celestial Chronicles. Today, we are diving into a fascinating topic, the Ethiopian Bible and why it got banned. Ever wondered why most of us have a 66-book Bible while others, like the Ethiopian Bible, contain many more books? Why does Enoch's story matter to us today? And what can we learn from him? We'll also discuss the Book of Enoch and whether it should be considered part of the Bible. So, stay tuned for an enlightening journey through one of the Bible's most mysterious figures. Before we dive in, if you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing to our channel. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our future videos. And don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear your opinions and answer any questions you might have. Now, let's get started. The History of the Ethiopian Bible The Ethiopian Bible has fascinated many people because of its unique content and rich history. Unlike most other versions of the Bible, the Ethiopian Bible contains 88 books. This includes not only the standard books found in the Old and New Testaments, but also additional texts like the Book of Enoch, the Book of Jubilees, and various other writings that are not found in other biblical canons. Ethiopia has a long and deep-rooted Christian history. Christianity became the official religion of Ethiopia in the 4th century, making it one of the first nations in the world to adopt Christianity as its state religion. This was long before Christianity spread to many other parts of the world. Historical records show that Ethiopia provided a safe haven for Christian refugees who were fleeing persecution from other kingdoms and empires. This welcoming attitude towards Christians shows how deeply embedded the Christian faith is in Ethiopian culture. In the 5th century, a significant milestone was achieved when the Bible was translated into GEZ, the ancient liturgical language of Ethiopia. Translating the Bible into GEZ was important because it made the scriptures accessible to the Ethiopian people in their own language. This allowed ordinary people to read and understand the word of God for themselves, which helped to foster a vibrant and deeply rooted Christian culture in Ethiopia. The Ethiopian Bible is not just a religious text, it is also a cultural treasure. It includes ancient scrolls and manuscripts that have been preserved for centuries. Some of these texts are unique to the Ethiopian Bible and are not found anywhere else in the world. This makes the Ethiopian Bible a valuable resource for understanding early Christian history and the development of Christian thought. Moreover, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, which oversees the Ethiopian Bible, plays a crucial role in maintaining and preserving these ancient texts. The Church's efforts have helped to keep these important religious and historical documents intact for future generations. Overall, the history of the Ethiopian Bible is a testament to Ethiopia's rich religious heritage and its long-standing commitment to preserving the Christian faith. It stands as a unique and important part of the broader Christian tradition. Why was the Ethiopian Bible banned? The Bible as we know it today was shaped by many complex decisions about which texts to include. Early church leaders met at councils, such as the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD and the First Council of Constantinople in 381 AD, to decide which books would be considered official scripture. They chose texts written by Jesus' followers or those who saw him teach, and those that fit well with the rest of the Bible. This process led to the exclusion of many texts, including those found in the Ethiopian Bible. In the early 1600s, during the reign of King James I, there was a major revision of the Bible. King James commissioned a new translation to resolve religious conflicts and solidify his authority. This translation, known as the King James Bible, became one of the most popular versions because of advances in printing technology. Like earlier versions, such as the Latin Vulgate, the King James Bible excluded some books that are included in the Ethiopian Bible. One reason the Ethiopian Bible remains relatively unknown is because of its language. It is written in GEZ, an ancient Ethiopian language, making it hard to access for those who don't speak it. The lack of translations into other languages has further limited its reach. Additionally, the unique practices and traditions of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church have kept it somewhat isolated from other Christian denominations. Furthermore, the Ethiopian Bible includes books that were not accepted by the early church councils. These councils aimed to create a unified Christian doctrine, and texts that did not align with their criteria were left out. The Ethiopian Bible's inclusion of books like the Book of Enoch and the Book of Jubilee sets it apart from other biblical canons. Despite this, the Ethiopian Bible holds significant historical and religious value. Its unique content provides insight into early Christian history and the beliefs of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. The preservation of these texts by the Ethiopian Church highlights the diversity within Christianity and the rich cultural heritage of Ethiopia. 
Content of the Ethiopian Bible The Ethiopian Bible is unique because it contains several books not found in most other versions of the Bible. Here are some of the key books included. The books of Enoch, particularly 1st Enoch, are considered canonical in the Ethiopian Bible. These books contain extensive stories about angels, demons, and the origins of sin. For instance, 1st Enoch gives a detailed account of the fall of the angels, who are also called watchers, and their interactions with humanity. These angels are said to have rebelled against God, come to earth, and had children with human women, resulting in the Nephilim. First Enoch is one of several pseudepigraphal works, meaning it is falsely attributed to Enoch, who lived before the flood. The Book of Jubilees, also known as Little Genesis, rewrites much of the content of the Book of Genesis but with additional details and interpretations. Jubilees offers a more elaborate retelling of the creation story, the lives of the patriarchs like Abraham and Jacob, and the establishment of Jewish laws and customs. This book provides deeper insights into the nature of sin and the role of angels in human history. It divides history into jubilee periods of 49 years, giving a unique chronological framework. The Book of Maccabean is another unique text found in the Ethiopian Bible. Unlike the books of Maccabees found in Catholic and Orthodox Bibles, the Book of Maccabean provides distinct historical and theological narratives. These books highlight the struggles and triumphs of the Jewish people, focusing on different events and characters than the Maccabees. The stories offer valuable lessons and reflections on faith, perseverance, and the importance of staying true to one's beliefs in the face of adversity. In addition to these, the Ethiopian Bible includes other texts that are not found in most other biblical canons. These texts provide a richer and more diverse set of teachings and stories that have been preserved by the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. The Ethiopian Bible includes ancient scrolls and manuscripts that have been preserved for centuries. Some of these texts are unique to the Ethiopian tradition and are not found anywhere else in the world. This makes the Ethiopian Bible a valuable resource for understanding early Christian history and the development of Christian thought. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church plays a crucial role in maintaining and preserving these ancient texts. The Church's efforts have helped keep these important religious and historical documents intact for future generations. This dedication to preservation highlights the importance of these texts in Ethiopian culture and their contribution to the broader Christian tradition. Overall, the content of the Ethiopian Bible offers a unique and rich perspective on biblical history, providing insights that are not available in other versions of the Bible. The Ethiopian Bible is remarkable not only for the well-known books like Enoch and Jubilees, but also for other unique writings that provide a deeper understanding of early Christian beliefs. Here are some of these additional texts. The Ascension of Isaiah is an important text included in the Ethiopian Bible. It provides a vivid and detailed account of the prophet Isaiah's vision of the heavens and his encounter with various angels. This text offers unique insights into the nature of heaven and the roles of different angels, expanding our understanding of early Christian cosmology. It also contains prophecies about the coming of Jesus Christ and the end times, emphasizing the themes of judgment and salvation. The Apocalypse of Peter is another significant work found in the Ethiopian Bible. This text gives a detailed description of the afterlife, particularly the rewards for the righteous and the punishments for the wicked. It provides a graphic portrayal of heaven and hell, offering early Christians a powerful vision of what awaits after death. The detailed descriptions of the afterlife in the Apocalypse of Peter influence the development of Christian eschatology, the study of the end times. The inclusion of these texts in the Ethiopian Bible reflects the diverse and detailed religious views of Ethiopian Christians. These writings give us a glimpse into the early Christian beliefs about the end times and the afterlife, showcasing a rich tapestry of theological thought. The Ethiopian Bible, with its unique content, offers a broader perspective on the early Christian worldview, highlighting themes of judgment, salvation, and the nature of the divine. By including texts like the Ascension of Isaiah and the Apocalypse of Peter, the Ethiopian Bible provides a richer and more nuanced understanding of Christian beliefs. These writings help us see the broader scope of early Christian theology and the diversity of thought within the Christian tradition. They also demonstrate the Ethiopian Orthodox Church's commitment to preserving a wide range of religious texts that offer valuable insights into the faith and practices of early Christians. Overall, the Ethiopian Bible's inclusion of these and other unique writings enriches our understanding of early Christianity and highlights the depth and diversity of Ethiopian Christian thought. The Ethiopian Bible's canon is quite different from other Christian canons, such as those used by Protestant, Catholic, and Eastern Orthodox Christians. Let's look at these differences. The Catholic canon includes 73 books, which is more than the Protestant Bible. The Catholic Bible contains extra books known as the Deuterocanonical books. 
these additional books provide important historical and religious insights. However, the Catholic Bible does not include the special books found in the Ethiopian Bible, like the Book of Enoch and the Book of Jubilees. The Protestant Bible contains 66 books, fewer than both the Catholic and Ethiopian Bibles. The Protestant Reformation led to the removal of the deuterocanonical books, which are included in the Catholic canon. As a result, the Protestant Bible has even fewer books than the Catholic Bible, and like the Catholic Bible, it lacks the unique texts found in the Ethiopian Bible. The Eastern Orthodox canon is similar to the Catholic canon but includes a few more books. It has a wider collection of texts than the Protestant Bible but still does not include the unique books that are part of the Ethiopian Bible. The Eastern Orthodox Church recognizes several additional texts as scripture but does not encompass the full range of books that the Ethiopian Orthodox Church includes. The Apocrypha. The term Apocrypha means hidden books in Greek. These are Jewish writings from the Second Temple period that were not included in the Jewish canon. Some of these books are found in the Catholic and Eastern Orthodox Bibles but not in the Protestant Bible. The Ethiopian Bible includes some apocryphal texts as well, providing a broader view of ancient Jewish literature. The Dead Sea Scrolls The discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls in 1947 renewed scholarly interest in the Apocrypha and Pseudepigrapha, books written under false authorship. The Dead Sea Scrolls include parts of more than 700 ancient Jewish manuscripts, many of which are written in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. These scrolls have helped scholars understand more about the diversity of religious thought in ancient Judaism and early Christianity. Significance of Africans in the Biblical Narrative Africans have played a significant role in the Biblical narrative, leaving a lasting impact. Let's explore some key Biblical figures and their connections to Africa. Abraham in Egypt Due to a famine, Abraham traveled to Egypt to sojourn there. This early interaction between the Hebrews and Africans highlights the connection between these cultures. Joseph sold into slavery by his brothers, ended up in Egypt. His story of betrayal and redemption is set in Africa and shows how he rose to a position of power, eventually saving his family from famine. Moses and the Exodus The story of Moses liberating the Israelites from slavery in Egypt is one of the central narratives of the Bible. This powerful story of freedom and faith is set in Africa, emphasizing the continent's significance in biblical history. Ethiopia and Kushites Throughout the Bible, Ethiopia, referred to as Kush, and its people are mentioned multiple times. This indicates their importance and influence in biblical events and narratives. The Queen of Sheba The Queen of Sheba visited King Solomon, bringing valuable gifts and wisdom. This visit showcases the deep cultural and historical ties between Ethiopia and Israel and highlights the Queen's significant role in biblical history. The Ethiopian Eunuch in the New Testament, an Ethiopian eunuch is one of the first recorded Christian converts from Africa. His conversion story highlights early Christian interactions with Ethiopians and underscores Africa's early embrace of Christianity. The Ethiopian Bible, with its unique canon and diverse texts, offers a richer understanding of early Christian beliefs and practices. Its inclusion of additional books like the Books of Enoch, the Book of Jubilees, and other writings provides a broader perspective on biblical history. The significant role of Africans in the biblical narrative further underscores the deep and lasting connections between Africa and the biblical world. The Ethiopian Bible, with its unique content and rich history, offers a broader perspective on ancient religious texts. While it includes books not found in the mainstream biblical canon, these writings provide invaluable historical, theological, and cultural insights. Understanding the Ethiopian Bible helps us appreciate the diverse ways in which Christianity has developed and spread throughout the world. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history and content of the Ethiopian Bible. If you found this video enlightening, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Celestial Chronicles for more fascinating discussions. Leave your thoughts and questions in the comments below, we'd love to hear from you.